Welcome to day two of our Panama Canal series, where we're going from LA to Miami. It's our first sea day, and today we're gonna be touring the ship deck by deck, talking about the good and the bad. So we'll take a look at what this ship has to offer, and we'll see. Hopefully there is a lot to do aboard, because we have 15 days on this ship. If today doesn't go well, then the rest of the cruise nice will be a scratch. So today's a make or break day. We'll see how it goes. With 20 decks, we might as well start at the top. But 20, 19, and 18 aren't quite full decks. With them really just being the go-karts, laser tag, and vibe beach club, which are all things that cost extra, we're not off to a great start. 17 is where it starts getting good. Welcome to the Sky Deck, where you can find our first stop, American Diner. Take a look at the menu, it doesn't look half bad. I do want to say American Diner is definitely a good thing because one, this restaurant actually used to be a specialty restaurant, meaning it cost money. But just a few weeks ago, they actually started making this restaurant complimentary. It's not the same menu as it was before, but it's still free. I've never seen that on any other cruise line where they walk back a decision to charge money and then to make it free. So good on Norwegian. I'm really happy with that. Just another variety restaurant to go to. It was pretty good. I liked my sliders and that's all that matters is that if we have somewhere else to go, we don't have to pay extra and it was pretty good. What do you want for free? Here's a good look at the pool deck, and I just want to mention, look at the kids pool. Just teething with kids right now. Obviously, there's really not that many kids going in the pool because there's not that many kids on this sailing, so that's kind of why. This is definitely not what it looks like on a normal seven night or shorter sailing. And just a general look at the pool, really not that full. It is 70 degrees right now, so it's warm actually because the sun's out, but not exactly the hottest. So that's why I'm guessing not that many people are in the pool. But the sun deck, the sun chairs are definitely Definitely taken. I do want to know one thing bad about Norwegian Bliss is that this is kind of the only pool deck that you have here. They do have the uh, Spice H2 all the way in the back, which is a little adults only area, but as far as just open pool deck, that's it. The forward half is the Vibe Beach Club and Haven, which is the uh, suite class, so there's not much for you if you're just a regular guest, which we are right now. So I couldn't imagine what this ship would be like in summer on a shorter sailing when people really want to be out sun tanning and you know in in the sun in a chair just kicking back and relax it wouldn't be that fun at least i don't think so negative point on that deck 15 forward is the observation lounge but we discussed all of these things in yesterday's video have you seen it are you subscribed yes well good we can keep on going decks 14 through 9 are just cabin 2000 200 cabins total on board with a passenger capacity of 4,000 guests. So I guess they need seven decks dedicated to cabins only. That brings us to deck eight, my favorite spot. Oh, look at that. I guess going through 2,000 cabins took a while and now it's sunset. Time flies. Alrighty, we've come here to the back of the ship. Right now, you might be able to hear it. The cruise director is talking about the activities today, which brings me to the next topic I wanna to talk about. There is not that many activities being hosted throughout the day. My assumption is, I'm gonna give Norwegian the benefit of the doubt, but there's not that many things going on. So my assumption is that because it's a Panama Canal cruise, they know that the crew, the crowd is a lot older, so they don't need to do as many activities, that maybe they're just kind of pulling it back just a little bit is what I'm thinking, but there's really not much going on. But we do have a show later tonight, but a lot of the activities, the crew hosted activities, we haven't seen too many of those. We did miss Deal or No Deal, which does cost money. We did miss Bingo, which also does cost money. And uh, we did do the, the squares, which by the way, uh, we didn't win on that one. But we have a second game. We have game two coming up. So that'll be happening during dinner. But what I did say, we did find our own fun today. We were making our own fun. We were watching the water slides, which are complimentary and we could do. We'll do later in the cruise. You have to stay tuned for that. It looks like fun. Um, but what happened was, is the slide drops and it goes up and people were getting stuck. So we were just playing and betting with each other whether or not they were gonna get stuck. We look at them, this person's gonna get stuck, this person wouldn't get stuck. Basically what it is, is if you don't weigh enough, you're gonna not have enough momentum to carry yourself all the way through. And that was really fun and really entertaining to watch. It's just, I, I have the idea that you can get stuck on the slide and they do have multiple exits in case that were to happen. Uh, it's kind of funny and it was really entertaining. It was a good couple hours for us. We were just watching people trying it and going, well, we'll try ourselves. Comment down below, do you think, am I gonna get stuck when I do the water slide? I hope not, that sounds scary for me, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. We'll see, <laughs> the idea of getting trapped in a tube is a little scary, but it's okay. This is my favorite spot of the ship. There's no better than this spot right here. Um, a lot of chilling, a lot of relaxing. Things will have to, we'll have to change things up. We're just trying not to be in a rush to get everything done right away because we have so long on this cruise. 
if we felt like we wanted to get everything done today, then what would we do tomorrow? Big negative downfall that I have is just the regular activities that you host throughout the day. There really hasn't been many of them, but we did also miss half the day. So hey, you know what? Can't knock them for that. Seriously, look at that sunset though. There's just nothing better than that, I feel. This is one of the main reasons why I love cruises and Norwegian, just the waterfront, the whole idea that this open space, that's all the way open, you just open and you get to see the ocean and where you're going and you're not blocked by a freaking lifeboat. Doesn't get better. It's also dinner time and look at that line for the Manhattan dining room, geez. Thankfully, we're going one deck down, not to the main dining room, but to a specialty restaurant. Hey, and lo look who I ran into on my way to the, the same place. Well, I mean, we're all going to the same place, so. For some sushi. I don't know if that's what you're getting tonight. Oh, man. Welcome to the Teppanyaki restaurant. Oh, I'm sorry, you have to see that. I'm sorry, I didn't, mean, didn't want to put that on the ca on camera. You're all here with us. But for those you who don't know, like Ralph, who's Hello. blissfully unaware, Teppanyaki is a really cool thing where they cook in front of you. They make the meal in front of you and they do a really cool performance. I've, I've experienced this a few times. We're just pretending like you haven't though. Okay, good. For the viewer. You're no like the viewer. Idea. No idea what's coming. Doesn't know anything about what's happening. Yep. I'm totally ignorant of this whole place. <laughs> for those of you wondering what you get, you do get the appetizers, soup and salad, miso soup and seaweed salad. Then you also get edamame. Then you only get one choice of an entree, meaning the classics or the combination, which I'm a little confused on the combination because the seafood on the classics looks better than the combination Edo. I don't know. But either way, pick whatever you want. You get one choice of protein and dessert. That's what you get and your $60 cover charge. Worth it? Maybe. Maybe not. But the show is what we care about. And Johnson's baby on. <laughs> there goes your smiley face and now Japanese smiley, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we go bouncing down. Oh, through my hands. All right. We are family. I got all my siblings in the It's just for me. <laughs> Now here in Debanyaki, we have a tradition. This is what we call a Japanese basketball game. All right? All you have to do, guys, is tilt your Japanese head, open your Japanese mouth, and I'll toss this Japanese egg. Anybody want to go first? Hey, here it goes, sir. All right. Watch the egg, touch the egg. Ready? One, two, three. Ready, sir. One, two, three. Right here. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Last one. All right. Ready? Yay! You gonna go next? Did everyone like it? Yeah, it's good. Woo! Have a <laughs> so dinner forced us to go out of order. So before we talk about dinner, let's talk about deck six. Of course, you can find the teppanyaki where we ate, but you can also find the other main dining rooms, taste and savor, which is included in the price of the cruise. Just as a side note, both of those restaurants share a menu with Manhattan. So whichever restaurant you go to, it'll all be the same. The Social is a nightclub that we checked out late last night, but in the day you can find art auctions and comedy shows in the early evenings. Center of the ship is the atrium where you can typically find those aforementioned activities throughout the day. All the way forward is Q Texas Steakhouse, another specialty restaurant where you might find some live music with your meal. That's enough touring, let's go back to deck eight and talk about tonight's dinner. All right, so we just got out of Teppanyaki and I decided to come out to the waterfront because one, these chairs are so comfy and so unused, like nobody else is with me. Uh, 
I mean, maybe everyone's at dinner right now and that's probably what's going on, but hey, whatever. We're just going to say that I'm alone and that this is a hidden place. So overall, Tebanyaki was phenomenal. I do enjoy it. As you know, I do. For those of you who have been around, you do know that I'm a big fan of Tebanyaki. It's the dinner and a show, which is always enjoyable. I, we, our chef was funny as heck. Shout out to Jonathan. Chef Jonathan, he was great. He, he nailed just about every trick and he nailed just about every joke and he's a pretty good singer. It's just a, a lot of fun. But I guess now's a good time to talk about freestyle dining, which is Norwegian's approach to dining. It's completely different than any other cruise line. If you've ever been on any other cruise line, they might have some semblance of what I'm talking about, but maybe not nailed so far what I'm seeing, is I think Norwegian has it down. Freestyle dining is a much more lax approach to dining. There's no set schedule, there's no set dining times. It's not like your traditional day and age of cruising where you go five o'clock, eight o'clock, those are your only two times for dining, and that's it. Go to the main dining room, same seat, same day, same, every, same everything over and over again. Maybe the many rotates. On this cruise line, it's not the case. It's freestyle. So basically what they want you to do is come aboard and like you were on land, if you feel like going to one restaurant, you go to that restaurant. If you feel like going to another, go to the other restaurant. Obviously, it is nicer to make reservations ahead of time, but they aren't going to hold you to it. If you make a reservation and you fail to show up, oh well, that's no skin off their back. They're not going to really force you to do anything about that. And that's what I like about freestyle dining so far. You can just make a reservation and go, or you can just walk up and hopefully if they have room for you, they'll take you right then and there. It's a nice approach. It's not as stiff. It's much. It's supposed to be much more free-flowing and much more to cater to if you feel like this one day or you feel like this one moment that you want to have Mexican food, or you want to have Italian food, or you want to have French, then just go get it, right? Now, not every restaurant's included, right? So there is specialty restaurants. Sepanyaki was a specialty restaurant. It did cost $60, but we did have the free at sea promotion in which we got three restaurants for free. So we're gonna be doing three, and then we added two more as an upgrade. And then I think I might go to some on my own as well throughout the rest of the voyage and that's kind of what we're gonna be doing is just trying out different specialty restaurants on the ship since we have so much time so overall freestyle dining for me so far for me is a plus i do like it uh though some of the things that i'm missing is there's no traditional formal night because when you're doing freestyle dining you can go to any restaurant at any time so there's no general formal night which i'm gonna miss but if you go to one of the upscale restaurants there is a dress code required and then you can dress up for that but you don't have to dress up for any of the other ones it's just it's different it's weird it's much more casual and i think norwegian might be the one that's pioneering us into that more casual era of cruising one thing about tabanyaki i did want to mention is that they are very good with allergies probably some of the best i've ever seen if they feel like they cannot deal with your allergy what they will do is they will actually make it for you in the back they made my entire meal in the back for me and they brought it out to me and it, though it was kind of sad that I didn't get to see the show in front of me, I didn't have to feel bad about the chef having to be super aware of what allergies or cross-contamination. It's just so much easier for the chef just to do his thing, to make, you know, just to make the, to keep the entertainment going and then have the kitchen in the back take care of it. I've been on other teppanyakis where they do it and they just try their best to not cross-contaminate. I think it's much safer, much better for those who have allergies to just, for them to make it in the back and everything to be safe in an allergy kitchen where they can just, they're sure. There's no, there's no way anything can go wrong. So I like that. That was really good. Yeah, so the Cavern Club is the Beatles tribute little lounge that they have, and they have a, a tribute band that plays. I'm glad that they have the outside feed because the uh, inside, we went in for a second to catch their last song, and it was crowded in there. So, yeah. I mean, and everyone was into it. Everyone was into it. I, this crowd loves them. It's almost like Beatlemania all over again, but instead on a cruise ship, with wigs. With wigs. Those are definitely, that's gotta be fake hair. <laughs> Four guys with that kind of haircut. Unlikely, how dedicated can you be? So with the waterfront on deck eight, there's a lot of venues that have an indoor and outdoor setting like the Cavern Club. And that includes specialty restaurants like La Cachina, Cagney Steakhouse, Ocean Blue, and Los Lobos. The ship isn't always sailing in conditions where you want to eat outside, but it's there if you want. There's one more specialty on this deck that's just indoors, and that's Food Republic. We'll talk about each of these restaurants later in the sailing, but for now, let's talk about some bars. There's a few notable ones like Sugarcane Mojito Bar, Malting's Whiskey Bar, and the Cellar Wine Bar. These three places each serve specialties that can't be found in any other bar across the ship. I don't drink, but I've heard that they're really good. The last thing I want to mention is the Humidor which is a cigar only lounge. That mention is dedicated to Roger who appreciates a cigar and a place that bans all other tobacco products other than cigars. Sorry for those of you who smoke cigarettes, you're not allowed. Just me casually filming the filming of the Daily Show where they announce all the activities. You should go get in the frame. <laughs>
every time Ian crosses, I'll give him one dollar. But does it have to be in front of or in back of? I'll let you do behind, but if you get one in front. I feel bad about that one. I would feel bad about that one. Yeah. I just like go out and circle the ship and then keep on coming back the same direction. <laughs> just like, just, 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 just so that way you just, it looks like you're infinitely looping. Yeah. I dare you. Yeah. Too bad you're not. Yeah, that'd be so funny. <laughs> They had a break. I was right about to walk the second time. I hate it here. <laughs> Shopping time in the sandbar. Ooh, look at that. Hooked on cruising in the smallest logo possible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, you have to, to really get the full effect. What is the back? Nothing. There's nothing on. Oh, okay. I was expecting there to be a gigantic. Logo. That's what I thought too. That was actually super under underwhelming. So they do have a bunch of Mexico merchandise, which is nice if you want that kind of things. But we are going to the destinations, so this is not what we're interested in. We're interested in one thing, and if you already know what it is, food. You don't buy. <laughs> By the way, this polo with the same small logo is forty-five dollars. I didn't see the uh, price for the jacket. But guess what? We have up here an $80 Norwegian Bliss ship model. You guys knew this was coming. As long as they're on board, we always buy them. Though we've been having bad luck. Though Ian has no idea about that. They do also have some travel essentials in case if you forget something. I won't go too much into pricing, but I can't imagine it's that cheap. But hey, you know, in case you forget it, you can buy it on board. Mission accomplished. I know that we already ate, but we're gonna check this out, the Garden Cafe. Also tonight is roasted lamb leg. I have never actually seen this in a buffet for desserts, so I'm gonna try it. So the alternative is cherry cobbler, and it's just what it is. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, can I just say that today has just been about food, and I didn't mean for it to be? Sorry about that. Okay, that's definitely strawberry. It's fantastic, but it has literally every other berry but cherry. On deck seven, you'll mostly find the casino, which is where we had our little football bet. The biggest positive about the casino is that it's a non-smoking casino. They do have a smoking section, but it's behind glass, and unlike other ships, you can cross through without getting smoked out. Once you've crossed through, you can find my favorite place, the local, which is a late night eatery that kept me up till three in the morning the night before. It does also serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but let's be honest, it's really here for us at two in the morning. And lastly, all the way forward, you will find the Bliss Theater. Welcome to the Bliss Theater for six, our show tonight. By the way, you do need a reservation for the show, so hopefully you made one in advance. I will say that for the size of the ship, the theater isn't exactly the biggest theater in the world, so there's not that much spacing. It does make sense why you need reservations. There is no balcony seating in this theater, so that's probably the biggest thing to note and why it feels so small. But they have two Broadway shows, six tonight, which we cannot record, and Jersey Boys coming up later. Talk about the show as soon as we get out. So we just got done with six. It was a pretty good show, to say the less, to say the least. It was it was a feminist retelling of the Henry VIII wives, the six of them. That's why it's called Six. You got to see just the end of it because they said take out your phones, and when they said take out your phones, I took out my camera. But it was to record them and to take pictures of them and to enjoy their last number, and that's what you got to see. That's the only part that you're allowed to record. So I didn't break the rules. They allowed me to, in a way. Enjoyable show. I don't know if it's one show that's staying. I heard that it's going away. At least on the app, it said this is going to go by the end of January. So if it stays, great. If not, great. I, whatever really happens. I hope that they keep at least two shows. Like they have Jersey Boys, which is another production show that's a really big one. And Six, 
and hopefully they keep two at the very least. Either way, the cast was phenomenal. All of them had great voices, and they had a live band behind them playing the music throughout the entire show. Great music, great production, great lighting. Everything was phenomenal. Just a small theater. I wish they had a bigger theater on this ship, and it wasn't so cramped in there. Uh, reservations being required is nice and all, but what if you're not on a longer sailing with multiple sea days with multiple show times, right? There's four show times total, but is that enough to get everybody in those theaters? I'm not really sure. That's all I got to say about six. But Steven, you forgot about the kids area on deck five. I didn't forget. I just didn't personally spend my time there. But if you have any stories to share about how the kids club is, please comment them down below. And also, if you're wondering about deck four, three, two, and one, they are crew only areas, so kind of lame. Okay, so I think we're just gonna call it right there. Back to the room, gotta get back to editing so we can get the next video out for you, hopefully. Today was great. Overall, good ship. Some negative things, but you know what? No ship is ever perfect. That's just kind of the reality of how things go. Make sure to check back for tomorrow's video, and since it's gonna be tomorrow, it's not a goodbye, but just a see you real soon.